me be showing off. So Wibble Ring Wub seems to be catching on with a few people. And the sensors don't seem to know what's going on. So we're going to chat a little more this morning. Yeah. So much for my musical talent. It's not much. But it is what it is. Hi. Somebody made a comment the other day about, of all things, my other hat. My plain old hat. My leather hat. I have other hats. We all do. We wear lots of hats. We wear lots of garb. Uniforms. Give us a special look. Might be intimidating to some. How you doing, Suzanne? Yeah, some people, they have a problem with this. What's the problem? He's different. Well, what's wrong with different? I got cock feathers in my hat. Not to mention a feather I didn't even know what sort of bird it came from, but it's a pretty bird. What's going on? It's a new week. A new month. A new chapter. How you feeling? You're part of it. It's time, you know. For a lot of you, it's time for you to go ahead and wake up. It's time to go ahead and wake up and smell the roses. So what happened to my... Wow, man, I just totally lost my visual. Isn't that something else? Took my hat off and it couldn't focus on me. Wow. Now, Nancy, glad to see you. Thank you. I love my hats, too. I've worn a lot of them over the years. At one time, I had a business where I wore 50 hats. You know that? 50 hats. How do you wear 50 hats? Well, let's just say you're the owner of the business. And um, you also happen to be the guy who's doing the buying for materials. You're doing selling. You're doing the Boston thing where you got to go around and tell people what to do. A lot of times that means you got to be also doing some painting and instructing people on how to paint. You got to go instruct people on how to, you got all these hats. And then you got to pay bills. Guess who has to pay the bills? Well, a lot of times it's you. Owning a business is so much fun, guys. Yeah. As long as you don't want to do anything else. Because if you're going to succeed in your passion, if you ignite that passion with coffee, which is what's in here, mm, just because some people don't believe what I tell them, there we go, coffee. Um, have you found your passion? Do you know what lights that fire in your belly? Is it writing, music, poetry? Is it Baseball, football, playing it, not watching it. And if watching things ignites your fire, going to movies, watching TV, watching other people do things, watching other people create things, watching, 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 watching. I'm okay with that. Somebody's got to watch all this stuff. <laughs> well, actually, they don't. Um, Facebook's proving that every once in a while. They prove how few people can watch something. You know what? I've had it as few as 18 people get a post from me or Brad or Tiny Texas Houses or 18 people out of 72,000 followers on Tiny Texas Houses. But that's after saying, making a poem about Facebook, 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 oh, Facebook, what's your problem? Something like that. And analog, algorithms aren't supposed to be able to be emotional. They don't get pissed off. You can't piss off an algorithm, supposedly. Or else AI has feelings. Because I can say certain things and all of a sudden I pissed it off. So either that or I got my own personal friend over there at Facebook. What a great place to have friends over in the censor department. But since I'm just a crazy old coot writing a book, you know, they all kind of look at me and go, ah. I'm not going to spend an hour listening to this crap. Bye. Oh, yeah, you trolls. They get paid by the hour or by the comment. 
I should say. So, if they can't get away with making a whole bunch of nasty comments, then it's not worth the time. So, if this seems long to you, hit the pause button at 15 minutes, which is our seven minutes, whatever the attention span is. You'll notice I pause at those moments. I give people a chance to bug out in the first nine to 11 minutes, which is what most people leave, including the trolls and censors. Isn't that cool? Now, why is that important? Because sometimes you have to sniff around a little bit. Any censors? Any trolls? Well, no. I don't have to worry about it too much because they make sure that if so few people see this before they get a chance to listen to it and review it and let it out there, there's very few comments. Um, now, in that fantasy world, of course. Now, I put out some poetry last night, some wibbly and wub poetry. Now, well, the idea is to inspire people to wibbleize. 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 That's a way to express yourself. To say something, maybe even cryptically, because you might get in trouble, or somebody might not need to understand you, and other people might need to understand you. In order to communicate, you might need some sort of encryption or a shared virus so that, that kind of like having resistance to COVID. If we all share, that herd mentality concept. If that's true, that you can inoculate either through infecting with a virus and having people recover on their own, which is what happened with, um, people don't really understand it, but that's kind of what happens most of the time. By the time the virus is out, the virus that was affecting everybody, by the time the vaccine is out, the virus is taking its course. So it's out, it hits everybody, they go to making a vaccine. Boom, we almost got it done. Second year comes around. Oh, well, we've already developed a <clears throat> herd resistance. Uh, nobody's getting sick on that one anymore. Yeah, but I just made a billion dollars worth of it, man. And uh, um, um, our, our organization is responsible for selling that. So we now will require you to use it up. Or we'll look bad. And you doctors, you going to keep your license? You better dish this stuff out. I know, I know. It gets a little bit creepy when you start adding in that, that, that. Oh, never mind. Just do your job. It's like the government. Now, it seems that in this story I'm writing, a good man trying to get good things done, it can take almost forever to get your helpers, who are all entrenched bureaucrats in this imaginary world, to do anything if they don't want to do it. You just can't go firing people like in the army or put them in the brig. Uh, it's not like civilian life where there's no union. You can't just go say, hey, you know what, dude? You're, you're just kind of screwing up. Get the heck out of my way. And the boot hits the butt and bang, it's a clear path. I, I, I understand from listening to the inside people that, because I'm doing research uh, to write this book, I got to do some research. Wouldn't you think that's a cool thing to do? Historical research. Because in, in the book, there's um, a reflection of facts. Literature always reflects facts. History just reflects what the winner wants everybody to know. That's history class. But literature reflects sort of the facts of the times. So it tries to hide it in there somehow. In the days of King James, if you didn't have King James approving your book, well, you didn't have a book. Why? Because your head got cut off. Because to get a book, you had to write it. And if you wrote it, you had to write it in the king's language, first of all. And second of all, you had to abide by the church. Otherwise, you're a heretic. You might get burned at the stake or hung or stretched and split. And I mean, they did a lot of things to go ahead and make sure there weren't any other heretics out there. What was a heretic, by the way? Oh, darn. People don't really understand what a heretic is in these days, do they? Oh, wait a second. I should say, um, people don't understand how you manipulate language and words to create a a class of people that you can then go out and, and attack without conscience. In war, we do that by, um, I think what they did with my dad, unfortunately, when he was in Vietnam, um, and my friends, is they taught 
you to think of those other people you're shooting as, as gooks or as slopes or as some other really hugely bad name to call somebody. And they came up with a lot of them. People call people the devil. They say people are eating children. They say people, all sorts of things in this book I'm writing about what happens in the world of fantasy and war. And it's all about this book, mind you, everybody. And those words, just like other words that are used all around the world, represent hate in a, in a um, you might say, a directed format that picks out a certain person or race. I've heard the horrible things said over time. And I've been called some pretty bad things. I've been called a kraut. I've been called a... Uh, Back in the days when we had problems and I was a school man, all it was a big problem between blacks and whites. In fact, in those days, they didn't use the word black. They used another word that I won't even use today, but I will say that it started with N. And why do I say I won't use it? Because I'm not allowed to use it. I'm a white person. But I'm also a black person in a white skin. I was born and brought up in the army. There's no color in the army. You're side by side with whatever color man it is. He is your buddy. He is your platoon leader. He may be your captain. You are equal human beings. Now, it wasn't always that way. Trust me. I'm not naive about the fact that there's always a problem. For right now, you're better off being racial um, minority in the military than you are being a female in a man's world out at war. I'm sorry. That's where the problem lies. And so now you're going to mix it up. You can't even protect the females in a male environment because men can't control themselves when they're young, apparently. And they don't prosecute. Yeah. I know, let's get it back on a lightweight subject, right? Why do those women come back and end up on the street? Why do those women end up with PTSD from what happened to them from our side? Many stories. Why do I offer up packages of houses, materials, all you need to build for veterans so that somebody will come out and help them? Because I can't go out there and help all of them myself. But I can provide a material package for it. In 15 years, I've offered that up over and again. Not one officer, not one organization, not one nonprofit, not President Trump, not President Obama, no, nor Clinton. None of them have done anything to take the salvage materials of our world and turn them into a resource basin that would supply careers and houses and incomes without imports, without toxins across the entire nation. They could say it's because I couldn't get their attention. They didn't know. Nobody knew that we were throwing away all these resources. In spite of my Screaming in the night. That's what it feels like when you're shadow banned and censored. We're selling cast iron to China for $60 a thousand pounds. And I can't drive it down the street from where I'm at to San Antonio for $60 a thousand pounds. How does it manage to go ahead and be worth it for us to not dig up iron ore and not have to go ahead and smelt it to make iron? And once that's all done, and it even looks like beautiful objects, but once that's done, we're going to go ahead and sell the final product to China for less than I can dig it out of the ground as iron ore, for less than I can smelt it just for the cost of the heat to do it or the equipment to do it on. We did all that in Pittsburgh. We did all that in uh, Philadelphia. We did all that up north when we had an industry in our country. And now we're going to give them all the product for dirt cheap nothing, let them build an army bigger than ours out of it, and send it back as what? Toys? Wake up, folks. In my story, that chapter is really ugly. It's a really ugly chapter. What happens when you pile up a whole bunch of weapons all next to each other? One sees, he's got, they got a big pile, and these guys got a big pile, and here's another big pile, and here's another. 
You don't want to waste all that money and not use it, do you? Not a general. Goodness gracious. <laughs> my fireworks stand, man. You can't take away my fireworks stand until we shoot the fireworks off. Yeah, but you're going to kill millions of people, man. You're going to destroy the environment. You're going to... The whales, you're going to blow their eardrums out with all that high solar stuff. And I mean, my God, can't you think about... Nah, man, we got a war to fight. Get out of the way, soldier. Yeah, I was a soldier. And if you are a soldier, and they say, get out of the way, you damn sure better get out of the way. You stand in front of a general, and you say, sir, I disagree. And according to the Constitution, I put you under arrest. For treason. General. And he go, excuse me, Do I see a, a private, a sergeant? What, what the, what, who the hell are you? President, I'm president. <laughs> I said, who the hell are you? I'm president of the country. Uh, dude, let me, let me clue you in. We're allowing you to be president of the country and your family's alive, isn't that cool? And they're gonna stay alive. Cause you're gonna listen. Instead of talk so damn much. You're causing a problem. And in the book of Wibbly and Wub, they come to this guy and they say, dude, you either shut up or you will be alone having watched your family die. And walk away. You heard that, hadn't you? Walk away. Unfortunately, more people need to walk away in some cases and less people in others. Now, luckily, this story, this little fake story, this wibbly and wub about a little boy who grows up, this poor boy with no hope of doing anything in his life, beaten down, different, challenged with a broken back, challenged with all sorts of illnesses, challenged with drunks, and all the other things that come in life. To prepare you, why? Prepare you. Well, if you're going to write a book, you better have a whole bunch of archetypes. People you can write about. Not real people. Just what some people can be like. You know, they can look good. They can have a nice smile. They can even have the look of caring for you in their eyes. How do you work with a salesman who's very good? Well, I also studied sales when I was a salesman years ago. Tom Hopkins, I highly recommend him. One of the leaders in the world of sales, how to be successful at anything and how to be happy at it. Before him, Zig Ziglar, and I mean, long list, I studied them all. I've read many, many uh, inspirational book that I think you should read. Og Mandini's got some incredible, short, easy books. Siddhartha by Herman Hess. If you read these books, they'll lead you to a way of thinking, if you can find them, if they haven't burned them in your area or banned them from the libraries or the schools, which seems to be growing again. Isn't that wonderful? So, you, you know you can't, I, I have to keep telling people why I'm drinking because otherwise they accuse me of being a drunk. I have somebody think, oh man, I think he's an alcoholic. He's drinking all the time. I was like, yeah, I drink coffee. I'm a coffee-holic, I guess, which is probably, to some degree, supposed to be detrimental to my health. On the other hand, there's ample evidence. Since the five people in the study in 1917 who they determined because if you drink coffee, it will dehydrate you because they peed. Imagine that, drinking coffee and peeing it out. I don't know how they figured out that it dehydrates you. And the more you drink coffee, the more you pee. It's amazing how that works. On the other hand, there's also some extremely good information out there, studies that show that coffee helps your memory, um, helps stick, especially if you take it when you go back to go to sleep, when, you, when you're waking up. 
it kind of kicks you into higher gear and allows you to store memories and process information at a higher speed. Now, considering I like to process at extremely high speeds and slow down dramatically in order to be able to communicate with people, I know I'm not slowing down much. Luckily, I lived in Michigan where we get to go 320 words a minute and everybody goes, huh? In the South. I thought I had a speech impediment. Now, imagine if I had a mask on, guys. You'd be missing my smile, missing my face for the most part. You'd be missing my nose, my mustache, my beard, and I'd probably be going, <sighs> trying to keep awake because I have trouble breathing underneath that mask. And it's not psychological. No, well, in some sense it is. You get less air, you get hypoxic. It affects you psychologically. You can't think as clear. See what you check on your meter, your little phone. It has a little health check on there. Check it. See what you're doing. What's your oxygenation of your blood? Should be 100, 99, 98. Anything under 98, you got to start thinking about what's wrong with me. Now put your mask on. You're going to go, what's wrong with me? And if it's under 90, OSHA is going to go, what's wrong with you? Get out of that environment. Get some oxygen. Now you think more people check that. They're living in tiny boxes called Thos, tiny houses on wheels, that have 6,500 gallons of air. And they're consuming that air at a rate of 500, 600 gallons an hour if they're sitting there idle. And it's cold as crap outside. And they got the heater going and there ain't no damn insulation to speak of. So they can't open the windows. This is a health alert for all those bozos in boxes with heaters in the cold, thinking they did a wise thing with that brand new vehicle you bought for 90,000 and some dollars or some other stupid price that you could finance because it's called an RV, recreational vehicle. What's that mean, folks? Please, this is the part you pass along to your friends before the sensors get hold of it because they don't like me talking about this shit. All right, in that house, you have 6,500 gallons of air, probably tops, after all your crap is crammed in there and all the stuff is put inside of the box. And that's assuming it's about a, let's say a typical box on wheels they're selling is uh, 8 foot wide, 13 and a half feet tall, 20 foot long, and that would be 6,500 gallons of air available to you. If you seal all the windows up, you got an air exchanger. It's called a fart fan, typically, because they won't bother to spend the good money it takes to put an air exchanger that captures the heat as you blow the air out of it and heats up the air as you suck in the freaking cold air from outside and pump it back in so you got something to breathe. I talk about breathing air. You do have something to breathe. And excuse me, don't let me for a moment tell you you don't have something to breathe. You have endocrine disruptive compounds, politely known as, of course, EDCs. And they mimic estrogen. So, honey, if you ain't getting enough estrogen, you just go ahead and move into that new tiny house with um, vinyl in it. Vinyl, maybe blinds from Walmart or whatever. That outgasses endocrine disruptive compounds. You breathe them in. You got more estrogen. And guys, if you want more estrogen, guess what? That's what the girls have in them naturally. And you tend to have testosterone, which you're going to have less of and balance it with this estrogen. And <clears throat> maybe be a little more emotional. Now, but the bigger problem is not that. There's also formaldehyde out of anything that's less than five years old coming out of that wood as you heat it up and dry it out. And there's also other chemicals you're curing out of those materials, including plasticizers. Oh, they're wonderful things too. You feeling like a little plasticky lately? Got little bags under your eyes? You got evidence perhaps of uh, being a little tired, not sleeping well, because the electromagnetic radiation out of the sidewalls reaches 16 inches out of the sidewall from the wiring you have in there or running under your bed for the lighting. And that 16 inch field, if you take an energy meter and you can just put it up next to it and you can sense it. Electricians use them all the time. You just put it up there, it turns red as soon as you get near the outlet. Well, put your head next to that, like you do at night with the bed, and your pineal gland gets fried. I mean, hot, because it's under radiation. It's under electromagnetic radiation all night, so it can't produce melatonin. It thinks the lights are on. It's not sleeping. If you don't produce melatonin, you can't sleep well, can't dream well, can't reduce your inflammation, can't heal. That's great if you want sick people, isn't it? So why would you wire 16 inches off the floor where your head sits at the wall where you put your headboard? Because most people are stupid enough to don't know anything. I say, stupid, because I'm going to tell you this is a problem. And what are you going to do? Stupid is you go back there and sleep with your head against the wall tonight instead of your feet. Because ignorant is you didn't know about it. 
you didn't know when you put your baby in the corner in the crib that it's got an outlet at both sides, 16 inches away from the wall, 16 inches off the floor. So when your baby rolls over by that, it rolls into an electrical field and wakes up. And suddenly going, why is the baby crying? And you pick it up, you carry it all around the room, and you lay it back down the crib outside that little realm, and it rolls back in there, and oh my God, you really do have a problem. It's invisible. Now, take your meter, your radiation meter, and stick it over there. Now, if you for one minute don't think you're the most complex electrical computer on the planet, a biocomputer, if you don't ground like everything else, a car, a phone, anything needs battery you're going to have a problem. If you put all sorts of ugly chemicals inside the body, through your lungs, into your blood directly, because you don't have oxygen, it's going to grab anything it can left. It's going to scrub whatever you're breathing. I'm going to finish up that little conversation because most people don't understand. 500 gallons of an air an hour for you alone in a single night, eight hours, is 4,000 gallons for the math wizards who can't do math in their head anymore. Now you get excited and boyfriend there, girlfriend there, wife's there. And the two of you are giggling, laughing, drinking a little wine. That's 750 gallons an hour each. You just burned another 1,500 gallons with two of you now instead of one. And in two hours, you're probably 3,000 gallons into a limited amount of oxygen. But you're really getting huh, giggly and laughing and a little bit of wine. So you get up in that loft, that little coffin loft most of them have. Three foot high, four foot high. Don't bang your head, please. And you have mad passion for an hour and you burn up another 2,000 gallons of air each i mean mad passion not just regular old passion mad passion one heck of a night and you fall asleep two thousand four thousand hmm, five six seven thousand gallons so far out of a 6500 gallon supply you're doing really good aren't you and where are you getting new air from did you open the windows up and freeze your ass off while you're doing that because your ass is so hot no it's too cold out there didn't you see it's it's 47 degrees below zero wind chill why am i gonna open a window up I had icicles this long out of the top of my school bus when I woke up in the morning it was six degrees and my heater broke down. Now, mm -hmm, where's this going to? So you wake up in the morning five or six hours later, you've now breathed in while you're sleeping, five or six hours, 1,000 gallons an hour, that's another 5,000 gallons. Where'd you get that from? Oh, you didn't. So you're a little oxygen star, been breathing in some oxygen poor fuel for the body. What are you going to breathe instead? Well, let me see. You got the formaldehyde you've been through. You've been through the plasticizers. You've been through the... All there is carbon dioxide left. Monoxide. I mean, nothing good, in other words, right? Junk. Well, I said monoxide. Because what? You wake up, you're a little bit drowsy. Man, I should feel like Superman. I just had that night and mad passion. I'm going out there, right? Oh, yeah. No, I'm going down to get some coffee. Turn on that propane, and I'm so tired, I don't even pay attention. It's burning blue, but it comes on. And no, it's burning orange. Shit, I didn't pay attention. So it's burning orange. I still put my coffee pot on there, and I go back up and take a little nap with honeydew, right? It may be a long nap. Because the reason that's burning orange instead of blue is because you haven't got enough oxygen to burn the flame blue like it should. So all that outgas and chemicals is not burning what's left in the oxygen. Guess what? It's going to make that flame happen. There's a chance the flame will go out. If it does, you've got propane going in there now. It's going to be a long rest before you wake up from that nap. Assuming it burns, you wake up, you get down and get your coffee and turn it off. I always have the next question. How'd Junior do downstairs last night? That baby or two babies that you decided to move into that house so you could save money and have that homestead out there in the middle of nowhere in a recreational vehicle that by law, by federal law, if you got that RV rating to get that financing, that vehicle, you cannot legally live in it for more than 20, or four, excuse me, 48 hours at a time. And if some authority that decided to be really draconian wanted to enforce that, all you guys living in RV parks, you can't live in those RVs. All you people living out in homesteads and RVs, that's 48 hours. How are you doing that for the other time in between? And how much time in between? Well, that's kind of determined by whoever says you can't do that. And for those of you who are living out there with that camping permit in Colorado and spent five years building your homestead, oh my God, I'm so sorry to hear from you. They stopped giving out camping permits. So you need to move. Think about this, people. As we downsize, if we don't have some unity here, we're going to get regulated right out of being able to live off the land, grow our own food, and get off the grid by choice. What happens when they take away your choice? In that book of Wibblery and Wub, why? 
You don't. Why? The whole world saw what was happening in America. And they went, holy moly. I hope they make it. Because if they don't, if freedom can't survive in America, if you can censor anybody in America, then that's not America anymore. That's the Orwellian version. Some writer created it. I read about that once. I believed it wasn't going to happen in 1984. I opened the first cyber cafe in 1996. And what's happened since then? If I'd have said this was going to happen in 1973 in a book, 40 years, oh, they'd, they'd throw me in the same asylum. So I'm going to go ahead and publish some of that book now. Parts of it. Hope you all have a great day. Yeah, the Tesla house batteries, there's all sorts of things we need to watch and pay attention to. Whenever you use something that's extremely, extremely hazardous waste when you're duck, lithium, and you get done with it, and you throw it out there, don't pay attention to it. Lithium batteries all over the place, just like billions, no, trillions, masks that are just strangling all sorts of animals. It is a biohazard to depend upon chemical storage of energy. All you out there think that's the solution, get over it. It's just like solar panels and it's just like nanotubes that we now have in our blood, most of us, some sort of nanocarbon tubes or otherwise that are a byproduct that we're told ahead of time. When those things break off, they become razor blades for everything down line that eats them. We have biohazard nightmares coming out of technology guys you think we had pollution before you don't understand what's inside all these little computers and phones we're using you got no freaking clue you have no idea what the damage from 5g is yet a weapon a weapon a weapon excuse me am i repeating myself Listen carefully, please. In my imaginary world of wibbly and wub. These broadcasts come from someplace, somewhere, sometime. They're going to be relevant for a long time. They address the fabric of our society. The book is being written in a number of forms. Into the Earth, Salvage Texas, Tiny Texas Houses, Little Wibs, My Energy of Soul, Embodied, My Imagination, Manifested. Its impact? Inspired. Inspired by the words of JFK, Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, Bob Marley, and many others, including Donald Trump. Leaders don't have to be perfect. Gandhi wasn't, but he led a nation peacefully to solutions. Flawed, absolutely. We are human. Don't expect us to be perfect. You want to come and critique me because you don't like my hat. You don't like the way I twisted my, uh, Trinity actually twisted my facial hair, my antennae. <sighs> Petty. But I have fun. Chewing up trolls. Please. Share this for the right reasons. Join me. Become a wubber. What the heck is a wubber? It's supposed to make you smile. It's supposed to make you laugh. It's supposed to make you think it's the most ridiculous concept in the world that anybody would try to put together. A world union of beings with no leader. Don't need a leader if all the beings get together and basically 
reach a common decision to have peace. No one man makes that happen. God does that. Not any man. Not me. Nobody. And anybody gets on that pulpit and tells you they're going to make that happen, they're suspect. And for those who believe when Jesus comes back, if he gets on that pulpit, trust me. Not going to be a question of evidence. If that's what you believe. If you believe it's Muhammad, if you believe Krishna's coming back or a new God being born, it really only matters to me what you believe if it includes killing everybody else I know to make that possible. At some point, the warriors, the legions of light from all around the cosmos, all around the universe, will step in. There's a world union of beings. Hmm. Whether you, you like it or not, those of you who think this is absolutely crazy and can't happen, trust me. I am just a writer talking about a story. And in that story, it happens. And luckily, I'm getting excerpts from a book in the future. You know what? And he's writing about the past. That's how we know it happened. It's going to be good. No matter how dark it looks. Why? Because you all are part of the story. And together, we, W-I-I, my eyes, your eyes, all of our eyes, the eyes together, Uniting toward this one particular goal. A world union of beings that will then be able to, in peace, go out into the cosmos. <laughs> Imagine that. Oh yeah, wait, it did. It's called Star Wars. It's called a whole bunch of movies and shows we've been watching to get us ready for this time we're in right now. And those who don't want you to believe it, that don't understand or want to participate in disclosure, don't worry. The evidence will be overwhelming soon. Darby's been expecting this for a long time. I hope you are too. If you're not, you're about for one big-ass surprise. See you later.